Sitting to my right, our co-host for the day, noted MMA Las Vegas-based attorney, Rob Cardenas. What's up, Rob? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Thanks for stopping by. I really, really appreciate it. You know, I say it every time I'm on, but I, I love you guys. I really appreciate it. This is an awesome opportunity, and I love hanging out with you guys. Thank, Thank you, man. You know, one of the major hurdles, if not the last hurdle, is going to be getting Dana to sign off on it and agree on it. Because absent that, um, I just don't see him able to being able to, um, you know, do it without the UFC's blessing. Connor has um, countered that other UFC athletes have participated in other sports outside of MMA, most notably submission grappling. Most of the time, those fighters were allowed to do that. Like, let's say John Jones recently. Right. It's because they weren't able to compete in MMA for one reason or another. Correct. Mostly it's, I guess, drug suspensions, things like that. Um, however, uh, I, they allowed Brendan Schaub to do it once, and he was an active MMA fighter. I think what's going to hold it up, Rob, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is if he's not being allowed to compete in MMA – then I believe he may have a case, whereas all they have to do is extend a bout agreement saying you're lined up to defend against this guy. Uh, and I think that whitewashes his opportunity to use the Ali Act. Yeah, I, I think you make an excellent point. And then I would I would follow that up by saying it's finances and dollars. And those situ- other situations you mentioned, the UFC didn't stand to benefit uh, on a on multiple million dollar level where, I mean, Connor is there. I mean, I know that. The, the organization doesn't like to hear it, but he's their cash cow. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he's a major, major draw. And, um, you know, they want, they're going to want a piece of that action. So it's not just a matter of, okay, we're going to allow you to do it, but they're going to want a piece of that pay-per-view as well. Right. And so I think that's really where, where the issues are, you know, off of what you've just said, but, but it's finances are going to dictate too. It's money, man. I think it can happen. I do too. It's just the UFC will have to be involved. That's Absolutely. all. That is all. Absolutely. But now, now that they crossed, uh, what I thought was another hurdle the other day was when the NSAC said, you know, that they would look to sanction a bout between a forty-nine and O boxer versus an O and O boxer. I was like, wow, I couldn't believe that. Right. Because I thought one thing they'd say is, well, you know, technically the matchmaking here isn't fair, right. but. They even left the caveat when there's money to be made, you know, things uh, tend to work out. I was like, wow, okay, if that's working out, then uh, they've crossed a hurdle. Listen, everything's subject to no- negotiation, and if it makes dollars, it makes sense, and that's exactly the types of things that, that Connor has said, and that's, uh, you know, exactly the types of things that Floyd would say. I mean, if, if, they, if, they, if it comes down to uh, everybody agreeing to the dollar amount, then it's going to happen.